pivoting this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. As you may recall, last time we set up persistence on our virtual corporation's DMZ with some PHP Meterpreter. Thank you, Egypt. Today, we'll be continuing on the attack with pivoting around that network, around the DMZ, and looking for other things. So first off, we're going to just recap what we have. We have a root shell with Java Meterpreter and PHP Meterpreter um, with www.data. Now, both of these will serve just fine to do network-based pivoting. We're going to just go in into our root shell, go off to a shell, and before I do that, I'm going to show you that the shell command, all it is actually running is running um, an execute, oops, execute command, and our shell died. The reason why our PHP shell died, and we can just get it back, um, is because it finally timed out. Execute dash h, oh, uh, hidden doesn't really work on Linux, so dash uh, help, then f for bin bash. Uh, that didn't work either. Oh, because we have to interact with it. So i to interact, c to channelize, and now we're in bin bash. id, we're root, netstat, dac a and o, and let's do netstat dash a and o pipe to listen to find out what these things are. Oops. Doesn't really help if you don't grep it. <laughs> netstat dash a and o grep listen. All right, it has way too many listening things on it. Awesome. So if you go through the netstat, you can actually see um, some of the connections that are going on. Um, actually, my, one of my favorite is ls of. I don't know if uh, this version of Linux has it. Yeah, it does. There you go. ls of will show you all the listening ports um, and the connections that are happening. So we can see that we have outbound connections to us and not really much else. And we, what we could do is use ping to ping around the network if we wanted to. But I think I like to do stuff with, from inside of Metasploit. So one of the things that we didn't show you before is the UDP probe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so exploit, or I'm sorry, auxiliary. Uh, I believe it is in disco scanners, discovery, then UDP probe. Now, there are two modules inside here. Um, there's UDP sweep and UDP probe. The UDP probe is very similar to the UDP sweep. The sweep is much faster, but will not go through pivots. The probe is slower, but will go through pivots. So we're going to um, set get into our probe. <laughs> wow, that's so bad. Um, show options. Yeah, it didn't, it's not working there. Show options. Now, we can set up our hosts. So our, in our sessions, we can see that the, the IP range that we're in is like 192.168.55 something. Um, and we can set the our host there. Dot 55.0 slash 24. And we could just hit in, and send it going right now, but that wouldn't do us any good because we're not sending it through anything. Metasploit doesn't automatically tell you where to, where, um, or doesn't automatically figure out where these things go. What we need to do is set a route. Now route, and dash h shows you the same thing. Route um, allows you to route specific IP ranges or IP addresses specifically through a interpreter session. So I, I could, if I wanted to, send all of 192.168.55 dot whatever through the first interpreter session and then another range through the second uh, session. So let's do 192.168.55.0.255.255.255.0 and send it through our route add. It helps if you say add. Route add. So now we have a route. We can do route print. There's our session. It's going to go through um, session one. And we can say threads. Let's just do 20 threads. 
That way it can hit 20 hosts at one time through our Java interpreter. And look at that. We see that 155.1, which is probably the firewall. Ooh, that's beautiful. So if you run into this situation, because the uh, uh, Postgres, this is usually because Postgres has died on you um, because it's trying to add too much data in. We, let's see if we're still connected. Hosts, and that works. And it's still going to die. All right, so why is that failing? All right, so we're going to do the UDP probe. The cool thing about the UDP probe is that it hits it and tells you a number of different systems, and a lot of different um, OSs have UDP ports that are open by default. Windows has 135. <laughs> Unix usually has an NTP port or an NFS or, or a number of different things. So it helps you identify and it's really, really quick to go through. So we're going to just show options that we got here, route print, okay, and we're run. We see that we got NTP on uh, 192.168.55.1 and it's dead. All right, so we were having some issues with the UDP probe. so. What we're going to do is switch gears onto just um, uh, setting the specific port or host that we're going to target. Now, normally you'd want to do this for um, all the slash 24, but for some reason it's just not working right now. We're going to go after the 192.168.55.101. Show options. Then we set our route. Show because we flush that route print route. Add so 192.168.55.0, so 255.255.250, and then I think we're on five. There we go. Route print, and we're good. Show options, and we hit run. All right, so we can see that 137 is available. It's Corp XP, it's on Sitting Duck domain. And we have a Windows host that we can target. Awesome. But how do we get there? Well, um, let's try, and you can find 9 billion different videos online about how to use MS Odo 67, but let's try it. Let's exploit Windows SMB um, MS 08 067. Set our, our host to 10, or I'm sorry, 192.168. Dot fifty five dot one oh one and let's run check. Check is a mo is a is a special function uh, a lot like exploit and run, but or generate. But all it does is is checks the remote host to see if it's vulnerable to the exploit you're trying. Now. Um, the Java RMI module has a scanner module instead of a check option. Um, there are other exploit modules that don't have a check option, so try it out, see if you can just check um, and see if it's vulnerable. Well, our target is. So we are going to set up an exploitation. Now, right now, if you see, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no payload selection selected. So we're going to set our payload to Windows, Interpreter, Reverse TCP. And since our 1099 port that we used earlier is not lo no longer working, but the HTTP requests work just fine, we're actually going to set a payload of reversed HTTP and set the L port to 80, because we know that works for these hosts. Set our L host to we can't tab complete here. The reason why we ta can't tab complete here is because um, the reverse HTTP and HTTPS can also select, uh, take uh, host names. So you can say myevilserver.hack5.org and um, put it in there. That way, if you switch IPs because they block the IP, you can simply change the DNS around and, you, and still get the callbacks for it. So let's set our L host to our, our IP address, which is, um, I don't know. Uh, let's do sh sessions. 
and our IP address is right there. So copy and paste that. Set our L host. There we go. Let's try exploiting. Fingers crossed and see if MS Logic 7 does what it's supposed to do. Attempting to trigger. It should not take this long. Probably needs a reboot. Yep. All right, that first exploit didn't work for some reason. We're gonna try again, just one more time. Now, this exploit does tend to crash um, a service. Uh, as most exploits do, um, what they are, are crashing services and then um, the, the developer or whoever made the exploit, the exploit developer, um, made it so that that exploit will execute shellcode instead of um, crash all the way. Sometimes it always it does all the way. This is not working. So if you're following along, we've had some issues trying to exploit MS-67. We actually had to upgrade to Service Pack 3 to get this to work. So we're going to try type exploit again, and hopefully, with our fingers crossed, get this to trigger and give us a shell. I forgot that the target was set to Service Pack 2 manually. All right, let's try this one more time, this time without having the target set to Service Pack 2 specifically. Yay! Awesome! We actually got our pivoted shell. Um, one thing to note about this is that it's coming directly out, even though we have a route to push the exploit. And um, one thing to mention is that Meterpreter itself is usually TLS encrypted. So there's no, um, there's no visual uh, TCP capture or TCP dump that they can see on this one. And the exploit going across the string, as soon as it hits the, the, the Metasploitable host, that's when you um, have that detectability. So across the firewall, they wouldn't see anything. So we have our session. It came out. It did reverse HTTP like we wanted it to. Um, and we've officially now got a shell on a Windows host as system. Yay. Again, this, this connection, although we sent the exploit over a different session, is coming directly out at us. Now, there are ways, and we'll definitely go into this in other segments, there are ways of having it come back out the same path. But in this instance, we chose not to do that because we were just talking about another DMZ host. All right, that's it. Finally got our exploit to work. And, and um, what I, I want to stress about this whole thing is um, exploits crash services or crash things. So unless you are sure about what that target is and how it works and everything, I wouldn't recommend um, sending exploits across the wire until you, you've got all of the information at hand. So what did you think? Um, how much did I mess up? MSF at hack5.org and stay tuned to Metasploit Minute for more shows like these. Thank you again for supporting the show. And if you want to support us even more, go to hakshop.com, enter coupon code MUBIX and get free Metasploit Minute stickers. Until next time, I'm MUBIX and I'll be trying to hack till the cows come home. In this video, you're going to have me going doot, 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 doot.